what are the entry level salaries for cybersecurity and is cybersecurity still a good career option for 2023 so i think anything regarding salaries specifically is very interesting to me when it comes to deciding what careers that you want to go into and i really think that cybersecurity is one of the best sectors in tech that has really good starting salaries even for beginners and entry level so when you're entry level you're typically going to be starting out in a security analyst or an soc analyst type role depending on your level of education and the background that you have the median salary for an information security analyst based on us news is a hundred and two thousand dollars per year when i graduated with my bachelor's degree i do think cybersecurity roles are one of the most viable in terms of salaries my first job in cybersecurity i started in a cybersecurity rotation program and i didn't have any prior cybersecurity experience but i was able to get a starting salary of hundred and fifteen thousand dollars per year and at the time as someone who had graduated college with a bachelor's this was definitely way more than i expected for an entry-level career in cybersecurity and the average cybersecurity salary in the u.s is about hundred and twenty thousand dollars per year or the equivalent of fifty seven dollars and sixty nine cents per hour entry-level cybersecurity positions can start at ninety three thousand dollars per year while experienced hires can make up to hundred and sixty five thousand dollars per year and did you know that according to the university of maryland hackers attack every 39 seconds on an average of 2,244 times a day. With all this in mind, you realize how prone any digital network is to unauthorized access from a third party. Cybersecurity is a growing industry that needs skilled professionals to fill entry-level, mid, and senior-level jobs. Cybersecurity jobs are in high demand, and the demand is expected to grow by 18% year-over-year in the next five years. And in today's digital world, cybersecurity has become an essential part of every company's strategy for sustainability, security, and growth. And as businesses grow, the demand for cybersecurity talent will only continue to rise in 20 2023 and many years to come. Cybersecurity is a growing field that is still in need of skilled professionals. The global cybersecurity market is expected to grow from $170 billion back in 2017 to now $202 billion in 2023. And because the demand for more cybersecurity jobs has risen significantly over the past few years, more than 1 million cybersecurity jobs will be available by 2025, but there will be less than 400,000 cybersecurity professionals to actually fill in those roles. Cybersecurity is projected to grow by 11% in 2023 and by 20% by 2025. So for those of you who are looking to get started in a career in cybersecurity, I'd recommend checking out the Simply Learn Postgraduate Program in Cybersecurity. The Simply Learn Postgraduate Program in Cybersecurity is one of the world's top cybersecurity programs with an average of 100 plus enrollments in every batch. Simply Learn has built a program in collaboration with MIT, Schwarzman College of Computing, and EC Council. This postgraduate program in cybersecurity is designed to equip you with the skills required to become an expert in the rapidly growing field of cybersecurity. The next cohort starts in March 2023 and the program duration is for six months. It was also chosen as the best cybersecurity program in 2022 by Course Report. The Simply Learn Postgraduate Program in Cybersecurity is listed among the top 17 cybersecurity programs in the world, having an average rating of 4.5 stars on online course review platforms like SwitchUp and Course Report. And I think one of the most important things to call out here is cybersecurity industry trends. Based on cyber ventures, by 2026, there will be 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs internationally with 700,000 available job roles today and the average Average annual salary of about $100,000 per year. This is also one of the reasons why I think cybersecurity is such a good career to go into, especially because joining a program like this will be able to help you kickstart your career in just a few months, where you can come in as a complete beginner and leave with a completed certification with a real hands-on experience, learning foundational cybersecurity concepts, working on hands-on projects, and have a much higher learning potential than most roles in and outside of tech as an entry-level beginner. They also have various different learner reviews listed on their platform with roles in security architecture and tech consulting. There's no prior experience required to enroll in this course and any graduate can enroll in this program. The program leverages MIT's academic excellence in cybersecurity and provides a comprehensive understanding of the field with various different courses featuring modules from the MIT Schwarzman College of Computing and EC Council, as well as masterclasses from MIT faculty. You'll have a chance to work on 25 hands-on projects as well as have access to modules from EC Council and have access to CEH learning material. The top alumni from Simply Learn postgraduate program in cybersecurity include Google, Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, LinkedIn, JP Morgan. At the end of this program, you'll also receive an EC Council learning kit and exam voucher, as well as six months free access to CHI Labs, plus 25 hacking challenges from the EC Council that'll give you really good experience as someone who is just getting started in cybersecurity. Fields covered include ethical hacking, risk management, software development security, network security, cryptography, security assessments, identity and access management, advanced hacking concepts, as well as mobile and web technologies. You can check out their admissions process where you can pay via monthly installments with various payment options with low APR and no hidden fees for as low as $264 a month. You can fill in your details to learn more about the program and speak directly with one of their career counselors to learn more about their admissions process and the program itself. 
So if you guys are interested in checking out the Simply Learn postgraduate program in cybersecurity, you can use my code SANDRA10 for 10% off as an early bird special. You can also learn more about the program itself linked in my description below. Thank you to Simply Learn for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the rest of the topics. The next thing I want to discuss on this list is cybersecurity salary growth and career trajectories. So like with any role in tech, I really feel like setting yourself up for the best salary trajectory and career growth trajectory in the beginning of your career is really important. For example, I was able to start at a higher starting salary because I was living in a higher cost of living city like New York, even if that same salary after taxes, after rent, general cost of living in a in a very high cost of living city would have probably been the equivalent of an 80 or $85,000 salary in a lower cost of living city or state. But I do think the actual number of your starting salary definitely does make an impact. For example, when I started looking for new jobs after about two and a half years in my first job, I realized that most of the negotiations that came from that salary expectation conversation with my recruiter went back to how much I'm making currently and what my salary expectations are based on what I'm currently making and the role that I'm going into. And because my current role is fully remote, there isn't necessarily any cost of living that I would be able to negotiate for because again, the role would be fully remote. And I was really just looking for anything above my current salary or even equivalent if I wasn't able to negotiate any further. But if I were to have been working, let's say in Delaware for $80,000 a year, then I would probably be adding 10 or $15,000 to my current salary and then giving that as an expectation while negotiating for salary for this new role. So that starting salary that you have is definitely very important because you're going to consciously or subconsciously use that as a bouncing board to negotiate for what your next salary is going to be or have expectations going in based on the jobs you apply for. And let me tell you, it makes a world of a difference. Even if you live in a higher cost of living city, at the end of the day, a higher salary is going to help you regardless because of the fact that you're able to then take that salary and negotiate somewhere else. And usually many people in tech switch jobs around every two to three years. And I would also say that switching jobs does end up baking for a healthy amount of salary growth compared to staying at a job for 10, 20, 30 years, which used to be the norm. Nowadays, people usually switch jobs maybe every three to four, maybe five years. And every time you switch, you typically will get you typically will get a decent salary bump to also help with your salary trajectory and growth on top of any promotions or job title changes or new certifications or, or any new course programs that you take. So always keep that in mind. Salaries and career growth are definitely tied somewhat loosely together, but that also doesn't mean that every promotion you get will come with a salary increase. And other times, even if you do get an increase in salary, doesn't mean that it's necessarily tied to a promotion as well. Another thing to note is that you shouldn't take numbers that you see online too seriously as a hard rule when you're looking for your entry-level cybersecurity job and also negotiating. For example, the specific job title that I went into in my first job, the average salary on Glassdoor for the job was actually around $90,000 and I was making about $25,000 more than that average as an entry-level employee. So I really think that those numbers can be used as kind of like a baseline, but they should never be the number that you start with because your recruiter is typically going to negotiate you down during that negotiation or interviewing process. So even if you're looking for 90 or $95,000 per year, let's say, you shouldn't tell them that exact number. You should instead tell them maybe 110 or 105. And then if a recruiter is okay with that, then obviously that's a win-win for everyone. And in terms of the pros of starting a cybersecurity career in 2023, there are going to be 3.5 million unfilled jobs in cybersecurity by 2025. And I really think that this is one of the best times, if any, to get started in cybersecurity. And I really think that you should take advantage of getting in now so that you're able to gain that experience for more experienced roles in cybersecurity that are going to be hiring with even more unfilled roles because there really just aren't enough people in cybersecurity to be able to fill those roles with the experience that the employers are looking for. For example, there are so many cybersecurity roles that are going unfilled that even someone with just a few years of experience will be able to contribute a lot to the team. And with more and more of the world coming online, it makes even more of an impact because most companies nowadays will have some kind of public facing, internet facing application or service or website or some kind of offering that is going to be internet based. There also ends up being more and more imminent threats in terms of nation states, other APTs, uh, hacktivists, just general hackers across the board. And companies are quickly realizing this, especially with the cost of cybersecurity breaches going up every single year. This is one of the fastest growing areas in tech and the demand is growing at an even faster pace compared to typical computer science and, and software engineering jobs. The four main pros of going into a cybersecurity career are essentially high starting salaries, good career trajectory and growth, more relative job security than other roles in tech and outside of tech, as well as just being able to work on interesting things. Every job is going to have its ups and downs, its boring days, and it's busy days, but I really think that cybersecurity is one of those is one of those roles in tech that when you're working hands-on and on interesting problems, they typically are going to be very interesting and not necessarily just the busy work that you would typically get from a role that may be entry-level or early career. Personally, as someone who has been working for four years in cybersecurity, I never would have expected to have this kind of responsibility, being able to work on these kinds of problems 
down in my current role and my current team being able to be so hands-on learning different skills and being able to work with some of the smartest people that i have ever worked with so really it's just a interesting job overall with good job security as well as good salary potential and in terms of these specific sectors that are hiring for cybersecurity, i actually have a video that i go a lot more in detail on this specifically for the types of roles and the types of sectors that you can go into in cybersecurity. and i'll link that video down in my description as well but i am going to briefly talk about four of them here in this video and the first one is the finance sector any company that is working in finance if it's a bank if it has financial services anything related to money consumers and businesses that is going to be a huge area to go into because let's face it even during an economic downturn a financial services company is not going to just let go of their cybersecurity team when it comes to people's money and their personal information especially around sensitive data like financial information financial companies are going to rely on their cybersecurity teams to protect your company's data as well as your customers data and i really do think that financial services is one of the best areas for job security when it comes to cybersecurity roles the second sector is healthcare again this is another area with very sensitive data and healthcare companies hospitals anything related to protected health information information is going to be very much locked down and also have a lot of regulatory and compliance things tied around so that is also another really really good area to go into the third one is government agencies and defense contractors this is definitely a very sensitive area to work in if you're working in the u.s you may end up getting a security clearance which also increases your earnings potential as well as a job pool that you can actually apply to and again government and agencies are notorious for having good job security as well as very good benefits so i would definitely look into that area so obviously based on these three things already you can see that the sectors are very diverse in terms of what you can go into for cybersecurity, which is also something that I personally really appreciate because if you worked in finance for a few years and then you decide, hey, I want to check out what it's like working in healthcare, then your skills are easily transferable. Even if they're in completely different sectors, you're going to be using the same skill sets and foundational cybersecurity knowledge compared to other roles where you may need to pick up a new certification or a new set of skills for XYZ. And the last sector specifically is a very broad one. And this is for small to medium sized SaaS companies. So I currently work for a SaaS company and SaaS companies are typically going to be some kind of b2b maybe b2c company that has some kind of software product they sell to customers whether they're businesses or consumers this could range anywhere from startups to companies with a few hundred employees to companies with maybe a few thousand employees and what i really like about this is typically cybersecurity teams are a bit smaller for example my first company where i worked for a financial services institution our cybersecurity team was bigger than the entire size of my current company i think we had around 3,000 people just in the cybersecurity team alone compared to now where my cybersecurity team is relatively smaller but because it's smaller, I'm also able to pick up more responsibilities. As someone who came into this job with two and a half years of experience, with the level of responsibility and the types of projects that I have now, I never would have been able to touch these kinds of projects if I was still working for my previous company. And I think that's the kind of like magic of working for a smaller company. They typically will have more nimble, smaller teams, and you're also going to be a lot more hands-on. You also just have a bigger opportunity to be able to work across many different teams, many different projects, many different initiatives if you're interested in a specific area and maybe the company hasn't hasn't started anything in that specific area then you could be the first one to bring that up and potentially lead a project in that space there's just a lot of opportunity when it comes to the types of things that you can work on and the responsibility that you have compared to a bigger company so hopefully this video was able to give you an idea of what the job outlook and trends look like for cybersecurity as i mentioned in the beginning of this video there is a huge need for cybersecurity talent and there really isn't enough of us out there to fill these roles so if you're interested in cybersecurity I would definitely recommend getting started and just trying it out seeing if it's for you and the simply learn postgraduate program is one of the best ways to get started and get your foot in the door into cybersecurity as a complete beginner don't forget to enroll in the simply learn postgraduate program in cybersecurity and get a flat 10 percent discount using my code sandra 10 everything is linked in my description below and i would love to hear your experience if you do decide to enroll in the course thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully this video was helpful to you let me know if there's any questions you have in the comments below and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe and turn on post notifications notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!